At this place in history, we're in the Snelling Room at the Vermont History Museum in Montpelier with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. And last time we were together, we talked about the embodiment of agriculture. So sum that up for us and then tell us what we're talking about today. Sure, so we're talking about the statues on the top of Vermont State House building. And the first statue was created, um, it, well, it went up in 1859 and it was the embodiment of agriculture, later to be known as Ceres, which is the Roman goddess of agriculture. It was on top of the State House for 80 years, but it was made out of wood wood rots, yeah. we have harsh winters here in Vermont, and so it was falling apart and needed to be replaced. How do we get to iteration number two of series? So series number two, yeah. I mean, I don't want to give anything away, but she is kind of looking at us right, right here. I had a or, hunch that yeah, might be a, it. A piece of her. <laughs> um, but in the mid thirties, they saw that this statue was just falling apart. There was no way they could save it, um, so it had to come down. State legislature appropriated some money to hire another sculptor to do it, but we're also in the middle of the Great Depression at the time. And I think Vermont frugality won out, so there was this guy, his name was Dwight Dwinell. He was the sergeant at arms of the Vermont State House. He was 80 years old, and he said, you know what? I can carve a statue for the top of the State House. The governor at the time, Governor Aiken, said, great. Go for it. So the 80-year-old sergeant at arms in a workshop out behind the state house carved this head for the wow. statue and a couple of his workmen who worked for him um, nailed and glued together um, ponderosa pine planks and carved out the body. You know, if you look at the pictures and the drawings that we have of Larkin Mead's statue, you can see this is a much rougher treatment. We can call it folk art. And this is an untrained craftsman um, who was a hobbyist carver and he created this head. But, you know, in a way, it really is an embodiment of the 1930s. It is, it's got this art deco look to it. It's got these great planes to it. It's a, it's a really neat statue, I think. Mm -hmm and I, Vermonters fell in love with it. And it was on top of the State House for yet another 80 years before it started to rot. And there's something behind us too that I know you wanted to show everyone. Can I, we dig uh, in? Oh, we can. Let's take a look at this. Okay. This is a great box. So I'm gonna open it up. These are Dwight Dwinell's tools. His family, you know, when they heard the statue was coming down and what was gonna happen with it said, hey, we want to donate his tools to the Vermont Historical Society. Um, but these on top are the carving tools that he used to carve the statue. It was on top of the State House. I mean, it really was a, a portable workshop, and uh, those were all his tools. It's what he used to maintain the State House for, for many, many years, 1917 until his death in 1940. And people will be able to come here to the Vermont History Museum to check this stuff out, right? Yeah, we've completely reinstalled the Snelling Room, all sorts of great paintings on the wall, and then we're telling the whole story of all three statues from the State House. At this place in history.